nationally who drank coffee spent three dollars on a cup of coffee every day, they'd be spending 100 and 119 billion dollars annually in the United States alone. And that's giant. That's more than we spend on Medicare in this country, which is pretty insane. And it's like you walk around, like you wake up, you turn the corner, coffee shop. You go to a store, Starbucks inside the coffee. Starbucks inside the store. You go anywhere, you go to a hospital, you go to a like a car dealership, for instance. I, I drove by a car dealership the other day, and there was like a giant like barista like just giant coffee shop inside this inside this uh, dealership and I was just like whoa that's uh that's crazy that's something that's really never been there before until like this day and age like you never really put that emphasis on coffee um, and it's no longer it's no longer just something you drink it's no longer just a luxury you know people who need to pick me up it's like a way of life people really let their day revolve around coffee much like you revolve revolved around any other addictions such as like cigarettes like any sort of tobacco drugs anything like that it gives you a giant energy boost which is really comparable or which is very similar to cigarettes and things of that nature um, we've turned coffee this is like we've turned the coffee industry into one of the biggest industries in the world which is pretty nuts um, Starbucks that was once a local shop is now one of a large is a large corporation it's lumped in there with pretty much any other corporation you see such as I mean I'd, I'd put it on the same stage as far as sales as like General Motors and things of that nature. Um, and what I really want, um, people that don't always pay for it, I know I don't always pay for it, and I drink it, it's like how much does the average person like in Portland spend on a cup each day that drinks it? Um, how much do we spend domestically each day or, or annually? Um, how many shops are there in Portland? Um, what are the benefits of pouring this amount of money into these coffee shops? Will it help the economy? Will it help you? What are the benefits? Uh, and what are we gonna get out of it in the long run? And basically, um, how like the amount of Portland's amount of Portlanders that consume like and which coffee shops they tend to go to? Do they lean domestic towards domestic coffee shops? Do they lean towards those big chains? Really, what's going on here? Such as like, you know, just the random ones you see, you know, you have, for instance, you've got the one like Smith um, that serves like right next to the middle. It's just the local ones, you know, like the, that don't have chains. And these chains would be like, be like Stumptown, the micro chains, things like that in Portland. Can I get some lights, please? Um, according to SBDC Net, Portland is one of the top three coffee cities in the nation, which means we consume the third most out of any other city. First one being San Francisco, second being Seattle, third being Portland, which is pretty insane. And as far as chains in Portland, or in the state of Oregon, there's 292 Starbucks in the state of Oregon alone, which is staggering, and 70 in Portland, not including the metropolitan area. So you can definitely see the majority of Starbucks and the majority of coffee shops are right centered right here in Portland. Um, and nationwide, like I said, 1.8, 1 1.8, 108.9 million adults drink coffee every day. And if three dollars a day, if we spend, if everyone that drinks coffee spends three dollars a day, we will make, uh, we will spend 326.7 million dollars daily on coffee, which is. A ridiculous amount. In Portland, we have 328,000 regular coffee drinkers each day, which I think is a huge amount because that's not including metropolitan areas. Um, and if everyone here spent three dollars on a cup a day, we'd be making 984,000 daily in Portland alone. And generally, um, the, the national average for coffee shops there's one coffee shop to every 10,000 people. But in Portland. It's one coffee shop to every 5,000 people, which is double the national average, which is like, it's, it's, it's pretty insane how that works. Um, so, but these, are, let, me, let me just, let me let, these are rough calculations I made off the data I found. So that, like, but that's really what's going on. And there's been three waves 
since coffee started. There's been the waves. There's the first wave, which is like the stuff our grandparents drank, like the diners, the stuff they had, basically the sludge they served, just the random like house coffee, Maxwell House blend. The second wave is was like the Starbucks wave, the Seattle wave. It was they, which Starbucks made coffee an affordable luxury, and basically just turned it into like this whole like I don't know like upper division type like upper you know upper tier type uh, experience to drink coffee. And the third wave is what Portland. Portland is like the center of the third wave. It's a pivotal city in the third wave. And the third wave, according to the Willamette Weekly, uh, it insists that the bean is fundamentally weird, as subject to the voodoo climate. Place in human skills as wine, which means that they put as much into it as they would put into viticulture, which is say, you know, the, the production of wine, the production of grapes, the strands, like splicing, like splicing the bean, like creating different ways to like make this coffee. And what they do basically is like they'll roast it, they'll roast it with different types of beans, they'll roast it with like different herbs, different tastes, in different locations. And it's really insane how they do it because there's a lot of chemistry that goes into it. Like John, when he's talking about his beer and how they put all these different hops and measurements and different chemicals into the beer. And that's exactly what they do for coffee, except it's on like a much larger scale. Stumptown being one of the top roasters in the world is centered right here in Portland because of their innovation and because of what they're doing. They're starting like this new solar roasting. So basically it's green, it's green friendly and it's pretty like it's pretty cool the way they do things because they're not used, they're not used, really utilizing power. They're not really, you know, it's just basically what the earth, earth gives them is what they're working with, and I think that's really cool. And um, according to the Willamette Weekly, in this article that I read, um, we are in Portland. We're producing some of the most pivotal, like scientifically advanced, like versatile beans in the world. Like we are one of the top production roasting cities in the world, and because of that, like. As a result, like a lot of people want to drink the coffee here. A lot of people want to do business here, and a lot of people think that it's a great place to do business if you're in the coffee industry, which I, which I think is great. But the thing is, like, with all these new roasters and with all these new shops and everything, there's, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of problems physically, a lot of problems financially, a lot of pros physically, and a lot of pros financially. Um, and you all know, coffee's very caffeine is very addicting. Yeah, like I said earlier, similar to cigarettes. Um, at least for those who buy, uh, that is for those who buy coffee, um, it's comparable to like price range. You spend like forty-five dollars on a pack a day, and you could spend forty-five dollars easily on a cup of coffee. What is that? Eight. That's that's yeah. Keep going. Oh, um, and for those who don't buy coffee in Portland, it could actually be very inexpensive to buy those generic brands, literally cents a day if you brew it yourself. Um, it can be yeah, like I said, very expensive habit. Um, People can be very unproductive without a cup of coffee in the morning. I know that. It's just part of my day. It's kind of what I do. And um, the cons and um, they always have time for cigarettes. They don't always have time to go out and buy a cup of coffee, which is like, you know, which can cause problems at work. You can be late. I know I've been late to work, so I want to buy a cup of coffee. Um, but caffeine does help people um, wake up, and it does increase the productivity level. Um, it alters mood and increases um, rapid speed information processing by 10%. But when the caffeine subsides, there's obviously headaches, anxiety, your body feels weird, kind of shut down. Um, it actually decreases when you're drinking it, or those who drink it regularly, decreases depression and anxiety that may be caused, you know, this may cause the way back nature of Portland because we drink so much coffee. Um, but exercise is also a great alternative if you don't like to drink coffee. Uh, it stimulates endorphins, which alters your mood and gets you going, which is, which is awesome. Um, in summary, um, if, you are, if you're a coffee lover, I know most of you are, um, you're living in the mecca of caffeine. Um, we spend ridiculous amounts on the substance and don't think twice. But it's very important to know how much we consume and where the best places to consume. And it's, very, it's, it's good to know that you, if, if you like coffee, you're living in a great place to drink it and consume it. And um, and the negative effects financially and physically. Um, I know if is that ten? Close. Um, for those of you, okay, let's close it up. For those of you who don't who drink coffee or don't drink coffee.